I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to take a first look at alchemy, beginning to understand what this extraordinarily rich and capable instrument can do. This is probably Logic's most involved sound-making plugin. So what we're going to do is to take an overview look at its capabilities, just to begin to understand what it can do and to understand, most importantly, what sorts of sounds it can make. So what I'm going to do is to start by just simply adding alchemy to um, the instrument track that I've set up here. And what we can see straight away is that we're greeted with this sort of nice friendly interface which is encouraging us to go looking for different types of sound. You can see, and we're going to come back to the browser shortly, but you can see that we can either browse by category, subcategory, genre and timbre and various other things which will lead us to the sorts of sounds that we might have in mind. But before we get into browsing presets, what we're going to do is to begin to understand a little bit what alchemy can be at its most deep. And what I mean by that is that effectively four separate sonic layers can be combined with an alchemy to make an overall patch. And the way that um, the interface is organized is between this browse page, a simplified, uh, a simplified version of that same page without the browser capabilities, but just an overview set of parameters and the much more involved advanced page. And what we can see here is that we've got four separate sound sources. And you can see that at the moment, those are displaying waveforms that are loaded into the four separate sonic blocks, which make up a single alchemy patch. Now, the reason why that's important is because those individual sound sources can either be waveforms or they can be audio files, samples that you can load into those bays. That alone should begin to tell you just how capable this instrument is of being a whole range of different things. Anything from beat loop manipulators through to pad generators or things that can do really interesting things with arpeggiated sounds, as we'll see very shortly. Let's come back to the browser page for a moment. This is showing us two things, as we've already seen, the browser at the top allowing us to find sounds, and at the bottom, this kind of overview of some of the key and most important areas of um, the sort of parameters that are available within an alchemy patch. Now you can see that when I start playing notes, we're generating the individual sounds. And of course, that's a combination of the four waveforms that are playing within this patch. But you can see over on the left hand side, what we have here is this interesting pad area. And what I can do is I can move this around between different snapshots of sort of settings around this um, sound. And let's be clear, what I'm not doing is moving from one preset to another. What I'm doing instead is moving between the snapshots of different parameter groups. So in other words, I could move from a bright synth to let's say a more muted synth and what that might equate to would be a change in filter position. That hopefully makes sense. But what alchemy can be is much deeper than that. I can move between not just bright sounds and dull sounds, but I can move between sounds that maybe are using arpeggiators and sounds that aren't, things that are moving in interesting ways, things that are maybe much more short from an envelope point of view. So we go from sounds which is sustained to sounds which are much sort of pluckier. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to hold down a note and we're going to move around various stages of this pad and we'll hear all of the forms that this um, combination of waveforms can produce on playback. Now what you can see as I move around the square is that the parameters over here on the right hand side are moving. And the reason that they're doing that, of course, is because as we move between these intermediate positions, either the delay time or the cutoff frequency or the reverb amount is morphing and changing. And what alchemy is great for is these kind of evolving, changing sounds. And this begins to show you why and how that's possible. Now, of course, I don't have to use the morph square in order to provide that change. I could simply say, I like this bright synth patch, but I'd like it to be a bit brighter and I'd like it to have more delay. And I'm obviously in a position to manipulate those if I want to myself. And you can see that there's a kind of master amp envelope here as well, allowing me to change overall attack, decay, sustain and release times. So hopefully, so far, that makes sense. 
But what we can also hear, and this is kind of one of the most remarkable things about alchemy, is that amongst the parameters that can be automated is, for instance, the switching on and off of an arpeggiator. We tend to think of an arpeggiator as being something which is either on or it's off. But in this bright synth patch as it exists in the top left hand corner, there is no arpeggiation. Whereas, of course, by the time we get down to here, either into the sort of minimal arp as it's listed here, or the dark arp or the bright arp, obviously, the arpeggiator has been switched on. Now let's just begin to understand how that kind of a manipulation is possible. What I can do underneath this main performance area is to come down to the arpeggiator. And what I can see is that there are actually separate arpeggiators for all four of the sonic layers that make up an alchemy patch, which is sort of remarkable. Four separate things that can move in different ways. And what you can see is that at the moment, the mode for the arpeggiator says off and that's true in area D or sound D and C and B and A. So at the moment this first position up in the top left hand corner here this bright synth position is showing me that the arpeggiator is off but what happens when I get down here is that of course what we're beginning to see is that the um, the overall mode for the arpeggiator is one of the parameters that can be manipulated. In other words, I can change its mode in real time. And we're hearing that. When I move from this position up here in the top left-hand corner down to here, one thing that's happening is that the modulation amount moving the arpeggiation mode from off to active is one of the things that we can do. So we can see that the arpeggiator here, as I say, there's a separate arpeggiator for every single um, waveform within Alchemy. And not only that, but the mode that governs playback of those arpeggiators can be modulated to switch on and off. So if we come back to here, um, we can set one of these positions, dive back into the ARP, and we should be in a position to actually hear some of the movement that we're seeing running backwards and forwards. Of course, we're just looking there at A, the first sound source within our sound. But of course, we could just as easily be watching the uh, arpeggiators for any of the other sound sources as well. What we can also see in this first overall browse page is that there's a separate effects uh, page down here at the bottom left hand side as well. And what we can have um, a chance to do here is to look at the effects that are set up within this list. You can see that there are a number of these. We can scroll through them and we're in a position to select from Alchemy's own internal effect here. And again, you can see that there are main effects as well as effects for each individual sound layer. You can see which ones are active. And what you can also see is that they're then listed to the right hand side. So I can see that first of all, the first effect that I've got set up here is a three band EQ. And I can see the settings that have been set up for these. And as I scroll across to the right hand side, I can see the other effects as well. And what you can see at a glance is that some parameters have this orange modulation routing around the outside, which shows me that these are the parameters that are moving when I move around from one of those positions to another back in the main performance square. So in other words, any time you see a parameter which has got an orange sort of semicircle or circle around it, that's showing that that parameter is modulatable. In other words, it has the potential to be switched on and off, increased or decreased in real time as that sound goes through. And of course, those are routings and modulations that you can set up yourself for any sound that you choose to either load and change or simply create from scratch yourself. So what we can do if we come back to the main performance area, of course, is to begin to get a sense of what Alchemy can do by using the browser. We can come up here and say, okay, well, I'm interested, let's say in bass sounds. I want a sort of classic bass sound. I can either sort of come through by individual genre. So I could come into down tempo sounds or drum and bass sounds if I wanted to and just go through a whole group of sounds here. And then of course by timbre, I can then say, okay, yeah, I quite want to hear what sort of distorted sounds might exist within there. And then I can simply click on a sound and load it. Equally, I might decide that actually what I want to do is to go back to the beginning, come through and reset these, looking for arpeggiated sounds instead, something maybe a little bit sequenced, maybe a little bit ambient, and this time let's just see if we can find something in this sort of short little um, list of sounds within these two categories. <laughs> Nice. 
It's very ambient. So for every sound I load, I can begin to see that I have this square of a sort of modulating, changing um, parameters available to me, which I can very easily and in a very liquid way move between. And to be honest, to start with, if all you do is to begin to get a sense of the sounds that are available to you within Alchemy by coming into the browser, launching some sounds and just beginning to sort of understand what's going on, then that's a great start. What you'll discover, of course, is that you have a you're in a position to manipulate the arpeggiators and the effect effects for those sounds as well. And if you're feeling brave, you can press the advance button and begin to get a sense of what's going on under the hood of these sounds, whether or not they're using all four of the available sound slots, which are available with an alchemy or whether or not as this sound is you're only using two of those a and b in this particular context so in this video what we've done is to take a look at alchemy we've restricted ourselves a little bit to just looking at the browse page but there's a lot of capability there alone we've seen that we have this performance square which allows us to morph between different parameter combinations so that we can actually hear changes in these sounds and recognizing that actually some of the things that can change are sophisticated like the arpeggiators and the effects routings so definitely dive in have a look at uh, the browser page and begin to just have a listen to some of the extraordinary sounds that alchemy can produce